We were going to White Shield celebration, and Grandma invited me in to come and eat something before we left. So we went in, and she she fed me and my son. But before we left, she said, "Do you know um, Sitting Bull's song?" And we both looked at each other and we said, no. And she said this, what kind of singers are you? So she sang it to us. My grandmother sang it to us. And that's how I remembered that. I learned that song. She's a survivor of uh, Carlisle, and uh, she lived in Bullhead. And then when they went, they rounded up all the kids and they took them to Macintosh to the railhead, and uh, they put them on a train going east. And she said it was kind of surprising to her that in the train there were hundreds of other kids that they brought from further west. And they loaded them all on the train and took them east to Carlisle. And uh, that's where she met my uh, my grandfather, Eagle Shield. He, he's a survivor of Carlisle, too. The stories that she, she told um, she was uh, she was nine years old when uh, they killed Sitting Bull, and she'd tell us about it, and then she'd cry, and then she'd remember something else, and she'd cry about that. <laughs> They sent the uh, Indian police down to Sitting Bull Camp to, to uh, arrest Sitting Bull. And um, she, knew, uh, she knew who shot him. This is in uh, December now. And uh, there was uh, thunder and lightning and, and, and the ground even split open down at the camp there just a ways from where he fell. And it was a real powerful time, so she'd remember that. And uh, that was a good indication that, yeah, he was, he was very spiritual. Even the earth split. They were young men. Sitting Bull was 34 when he was appointed the chief of the whole Ocheti Shagoni. 34 years old. They were young. And that's why I said today, if, if our youth knew all of this, that they could be such leaders at an early age like that. And uh, I don't know, I was just hoping that uh, something like that would happen again. I mean, those, that, that power to be felt by the people.